Today we are going to learn about essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are proteins, amino acids, that we need to include in our diet. If we don't have them in our diet, then we're going to be lacking something that our body is going to need. So there are also non-essential amino acids. This doesn't mean that your body doesn't need them, but non-essential amino acids your body can create out of the essential amino acids. And I'll give you some examples of that in a second. First, I think we need to understand the importance of proteins in our diet. A lot of times we think of protein as just building muscle, but it's, it's involved in so many things. Like uh, if you get like surgery, if you get injured, your pro protein is gonna be like one of the main actors in repairing your body. Um, aside from that, it's like in a bunch of biochemical reactions like digestion, uh, blood clotting, muscle contraction, all these things require proteins. It is also, uh, there's lots of hormone-like proteins. Um, so like leptin, we learned about leptin, that's actually a protein. Insulin is a protein. Growth hormone is a protein. We have a lot of proteins that actually act like hormones. Uh, what else? Provide structure to your cells and to your body, you know. Um, hair, skin, nails, that is from protein. Uh, hemoglobin, which transports oxygen to your muscles, that is a protein. Um, what else? It transports iron, it transports vitamins, minerals, nutrients, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's important for our immune system. So your antibodies, those are built out of protein. So if you want to fight off sicknesses, you need protein in your diet. It can be used for energy. So as you can see, there's just a ton of things that protein does. And uh, just real quick, we don't need to understand this. And to be honest, I don't even fully understand everything that's going on here. Leucine at the top right here, this is one essential amino acid. And this, uh, as you can see, is involved in some very intense processes. So your body is very complex and is doing a lot of things with these essential amino acids. So we need to make sure that we have them all in our diet. So let's take a look at these essential amino acids here. So uh, there are nine essential amino acids for children and then eight for healthy adults. Um, histidine, as you see on the top right there, children need to get this in their diet. They cannot synthesize histidine yet. And some older adults also cannot synthesize histidine. And histidine is in lots of foods, uh, meats, milks, beans, all that good stuff, all have histidine in, in it. So it's not too hard to get. Um, there's a lot of others. I'll just, I'll just let you look at this. Um, I found this interesting um, chart right here. This is actually looking at animal feed because animals also need uh, the nine or eight essential amino acids. On here they have eight because uh, they're not worried about children. And this is actually cattle feed. They're looking at what is lacking in cattle feed. And if you see on the uh, left-hand side, the unbalanced barrel over there with that red section, as you can see, it's not completely filled out. The reason is because typical cattle feed is lacking lysine. And if we have a, a vegan diet, we might also be lacking lysine. So what they do for cattle is add lysine into the food so that the cattle can get the lysine that they need to, pro to, to produce the other essential amino acids. If we look at uh, this green section right here, we have phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid. We can see it over here as well. It, from phenylalanine, we can produce tyrosine. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then over here on this pink section, we have methionine. Methionine and tyrosine can help us create cysteine. And so tyrosine and cysteine are non-essential amino acids because we can create them inside of our bodies with phenylalanine and methionine. So again, we need these eight to nine essential amino acids in order to be healthy. So uh, let's, let's check out complete protein. So what a complete protein is, is it has all of the essential amino acids. So it has all nine. So we see eggs, meat, milk, these have all nine. Some soy protein isolates also have all nine essential amino acids, but soy is lacking, I think, methionine, and they can add that in. They can isolate different proteins. Um, you're gonna have to do your own research on that. So for this protein rating over on the side here, this is the, uh, the rating of the combination of essential amino acids. So eggs are the best uh, combination of essential amino acids. They have pretty much everything you need to create a little chicken. And so it is also very good for your body. And don't worry, eggs aren't chickens yet. So, um, or, and they wouldn't become chickens because they weren't fertilized. So it is uh, fine, you're not eating baby chickens, right? Um, but yeah, eggs are gonna be your best protein rating. Meat is good, right? It has all nine essential amino acids. The reason why its rating is 70 is because the combination of them isn't quite as ideal as eggs, for instance. So it might be lacking 
a few of these, although you should be getting that somewhere else in your diet, hopefully. So people who eat meat or dairy, so vegetarians out there, if you eat eggs or drink milk, then you are pretty good on your complete proteins as well, assuming that you're eating enough of them. For vegans, it's a different story. We have a bunch of incomplete proteins, so plants have a lot of proteins in them as well, and you can get your daily all of your essential amino acids from plants. So we have brown rice being a, a pretty good protein. You can see the protein ratings right there. I don't need to read them all out to you, but we have peanuts on there, potatoes, wheat, right? So you get the idea. Uh, so with these, for vegans, we need to create a combination of foods in order to get all of our essential amino acids. This is a study that was actually looking at vegan diets and how uh, protein intake is consumed and vegetarian diets as well. And what they found the main issue wasn't the um, combination of essential amino acids, but was the amount of food and not getting enough protein. Because if you are consuming a um, all vegetable diet, you need to be consuming lots of food to get all of your protein in because vegetables are less calorie dense than meat tends to be. And so let's look at this uh, top bar right here. This is looking at people who had more plant protein intake in their diet. Uh, over 80%, about 80% of them were deficient in lysine. So lysine seems to be a more difficult protein that people aren't consuming. It's not difficult to eat, but people don't seem to be consuming it as often. So over here on the side, legumes are how we get lysine in our diet, and grains are how we get methionine in our diet. And so we need a combination of legumes and grains if we're on a vegan diet in order to be healthy. And I think really everybody, veg vegans, vegetarians, and meat eaters, should be having a good combination of legumes and grains in their diet anyways. So let's take a look at what legumes are. We got peanuts, black beans, peas, pretty much all beans, soybeans there, lentils. You get the idea for legumes. So we should be having these in our diet, particularly if you're vegan. And then grains are super important as well. So we got whole wheat, rice, oats, barley, rye. You get the picture there. Some classic combos throughout different cultures have you know, uh, developed this combination already. So we see tortillas and beans. That is a good combination to get all of your uh, protein, your essential amino acids for the day. Rice and beans as well. Rice and lentils. When I went to Nepal, they make like a lentil soup with rice. Um, it's called dal bat. You dip the rice in the lentil soup. Super good. I recommend anybody out there trying dal bat. I am a big fan. I was a vegetarian for three weeks when I was in Nepal. And so, uh, yeah, I went very hard on dal bat. Rice and peas as well. So think about these classic combos. If you are a vegan, they're going to help you get all those essential amino acids. Uh, let's kind of break this down a little more. So the um, recommended dietary allowance for protein for a vegan diet, they suggest getting 60% of your protein from grains. So we don't think about this, and grains have been, because their carbs have been a little maligned. Um, also, legumes are carbs, but people don't know that. Uh, grains have been a little bit maligned uh, in society right now for good reason, because we are eating too many refined grains, but we want to be eating whole grains. That's going to be uh, good for our health. So 60% of your protein from grains, 35 from legumes, and then 5 from leafy vegetables. And if we have this combination in our diet, you should be good to go with all of your essential amino acids, and then you can live a good, healthy, happy life. So uh, let's uh, break this down. This comes straight out of my textbook. This is a recommendation of what to include to get all of your essential amino acids for a 154 pound person who is following a vegan diet. So let's take a look and see what they recommend for just general meals. And this is just to get protein. So you obviously eat more food in your day, but if you include this combination, you will be 100% good to go with your essential amino acids. So we have uh, one and a quarter cup of beans. This can be pretty much any type of beans, soybeans, kidney beans, navy beans, you get the idea. Uh, quarter cup of seeds or nuts. This is good for everybody. Has really good healthy oils in it as well. We got four slices of whole grain bread, uh, two cups of vegetables. One of these cups should be from a leafy green vegetable, so salad or whatever you're trying to eat, spinach, something like that and then 2.5 cups of other grains. So brown rice, oatmeal, cracked wheat. And again, the reason why there's this focus on legumes and on grains is for that methionine and for that lysine because we need to make sure we're getting that in our diet if we're not eating dairy products, eggs, or meat. So um, some people will say, you know, it's impossible to be healthy with a uh, vegan diet. That is incorrect. You just need to be more aware of what you're eating. There are other nutritional deficiencies that we see in 
vegan or vegetarian diets like with minerals and vitamins. In the next video, we will address those and the nutritional value that meat actually has and how we can make up for that if we don't have meat in our diet. Okay, that is good for this video. I will see you in the next one.